Walgreens pharmacies. The jury also concluded that Bawani also perpetrated frauds on unsuspecting patients. I want to thank the jury for dutifully navigating through the complex issues presented by this case. The trial lasted four months, including several postponements caused, of course, by the pandemic. In January, a separate jury found Holmes guilty of three counts of criminal wire fraud and one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud against investors. The jury acquitted her on charges related to defrauding Theranos patients. Part of her defense was that she was manipulated by Belwani. Holmes remains on bail. She is scheduled to be sentenced in September, Belwani in November. They each face the possibility of 20 years in prison. Brian. All right, thanks, Anne. And I spoke with legal analyst Stephen Clark to get his reaction to today's verdict. What's your reaction to today's verdict? Well, certainly the Balwani team is not very happy with this result, particularly when you look at Elizabeth Holmes's case, and she was portrayed as the mastermind of Theranos, and yet she was only found guilty of four counts. But Mr. Balwani, who said, I was just following orders, an investor, got convicted of all charges. This was a very bad outcome for the Balwani team. And I think when you look at both of these cases, uh, it's clear that the the common denominator was that Balwani did not testify, and Ms. Holmes did. And I think Ms. Holmes did herself a lot of um, goodwill by testifying to that jury because she was found not guilty on many charges that Mr. Balwani is now facing. And during Elizabeth Holmes' trial, she accused Balwani of physical and emotional abuse and painting him as the mastermind of all of this, as you had just mentioned. Balwani denied those charges, tried to shift that blame to Holmes. So... How do you think her trial coming first impacted Balwani's outcome? Well, certainly for the prosecution, it was a dress rehearsal for the Balwani case. They looked at what went right and wrong in Elizabeth Holmes's case. They were able to fine tune their case and they really put on the same witnesses and evidence against Mr. Balwani. And so it for the prosecution, I think it was gave them a chance to clean up the case and it was a much better outcome. But what I think happened is that when Ms. Holmes took the stand and accused Mr. Balwani of domestic abuse and physical abuse, um, that certainly could have tainted the future jurors. And I think that'll be an avenue for uh, potential appeal. Was he um, already coming into court uh, being portrayed as both a fraudster and a domestic abuser, something that the defense is going to look at? But I think for the, de the defense of Balwani, they're going to say, these verdicts are inconsistent. How could Mr. Balwani, who's been convicted of conspiracy, um, and be, co be convicted of that, at the same time, Ms. Holmes was found not guilty of some of those conspiracy counts, when it's the two of them that are getting together to conspire. That doesn't seem to be a consistent verdict. And these cases would have been tried together had not Ms. Holmes accused Mr. Balwani of domestic abuse. The, the, judge felt that they had to separate the, the cases. And I think that worked tremendously to his disadvantage. You could have seen a very different outcome if these cases were tried together, perhaps not with this inconsistent outcome where Holmes was convicted of four charges, Balwani's convicted of 12, and yet she's the face of Theranos.